the, the PPC itself stands for production possibilities curve. So this line means all the things that are possible if everyone is working. So if every single person is working as hard as they can, you end up with this line. So plot your points, connect it with your production possibilities curve, and then pick back up with the video. All right, so we're gonna practice on this screen and then I'll have you practice on your sheet with the points that you plotted, but you should have a PPC that looks something like this. And if you'll look, we've got a point here, point A and point B. PPCs show opportunity cost, what you give up to move from one point to another along a PPC. So if I'm producing right now at point A, that means I'm making 90 hamburgers and 30 blizzards. But let's say it gets to be afternoon and I move to producing point B. Now I'm producing 70 blizzards and 40 hamburgers. So the question is, what's my opportunity cost? Well, remember, opportunity cost is what you give up. So when I move from point A to point B, I gain 40 blizzards, but I give up 50 hamburgers because I go from 90 to 40. So the answer would be 50 hamburgers. Take a second and answer the point B to point A question. Here, I am gaining hamburgers, but I'm giving up blizzards. So I move from 70 blizzards to 30 blizzards. So my answer for the second question would be 40 blizzards is my opportunity cost. If I'd asked what you gained, then you would have said 50 hamburgers. Try that with the questions on your own sheet. Okay, coming back to PPCs, uh, the curve here, as I mentioned, represents the boundary of the most you can make if you use all your resources efficiently. So this is the boundary. This is the best you can do. And sometimes you may see me trying to trick you and say, well, hey, what if you did your, you know, tried really hard, could you produce maybe out here at point D? And the answer is no. Point D is beyond what you can produce. Okay, so this is the boundary, the production possibilities curve, sometimes it's called a frontier in other textbooks and things. And you can produce anywhere along this point, but not beyond it. This point back here is also attainable. So anything behind this point, you can also produce. So point D here would be impossible. You can't produce it given the current resources. And point C would be inefficient. You can produce this if you are not using all available resources. So coming back to our PPC here, again, we have our little guidelines. We would be inefficient if one of our workers was texting, you know, playing on her phone rather than grilling. But we also would be inefficient if one of our workers was cleaning the dining room. That is something that's a great thing to do, but what it's not doing is the production that is represented on our graph, hamburgers or blizzards. So if you're doing anything else that's not represented on our graph, you would be inefficient. You can't make these quantities. And as you're well aware, in real life, we are often inefficient. So working on this line is more of a goal and it's a possibility. Anything behind this line is a possibility. Anything in front of this line is impossible. So why might a PPC be inefficient? We talked about that a minute ago. Anything that you're doing that's not making hamburgers or blizzards. So taking a look at the PPC that you graphed on your paper, I want you to give an example of something that might happen that would cause that PPC to be inefficient. Next question, what would happen if a new blizzard machine enabled more blizzards to be made in the same amount of time? So if you think about your PPC for hamburgers and blizzards, what would happen on this PPC if we got a new fancier blizzard machine that helped us to go faster? This would be called growth. So if our impossible becomes possible, now instead of making 80 blizzards, we can make 100, we're gonna have growth on this PPC. So you can see here drawn out slightly different numbers. The PPC has grown and now what used to be impossible is newly possible. But notice with the blizzard machine, we didn't affect the maximum amount of hamburgers that we can make. We only affected the maximum amount of blizzards. 
If we go back to our old PPC and we had new worker training that enabled everything to be made faster, then we would see growth on both sides of the PPC. So growth on a PPC is when you can produce more than your previous maximum. And that would look like this on the PPC graph that we've been talking about. So you get a whole new line. So those of you that were asking that what if question earlier, what if this happened, what if that happened? Well, if we had new worker training, we could handle this. And so we would have growth. A fast food example I can think of is many of the Chick-fil-A restaurants in our area have been remodeled to have more efficient drive-throughs and better parking lots to enable their service to go faster and more efficiently. They also added phone ordering to enable service to go faster. That led to growth in the amount of, in this case, chicken sandwiches and milkshakes maybe, or nuggets, that they could produce. So this change in technology led to growth on the PPC. What causes growth on a PPC? New technology, new worker training, or increases in productivity. Now I'm gonna ask you to draw a PPC for yourself. I want you to think about two things that you can measure and produce. So if you can't count it, this is not gonna be appropriate. So think about maybe meals that you can make, dishes you could wash, homework problems you could complete, shelves you could stock, cookies you could bake, nails you could paint, texts you could send, anything that you can measure numerically and produce. Then make a point inefficient and explain why.